In this clip, we're going to be learning about the D-grain node. Okay, so this is normally something that you see done at the very beginning of a comp, but again, it's kind of one of those standalone nodes that just felt better to cover uh, here at the end, because you also don't always see people doing this. It's not really the right workflow not to degrain your footage, um, but sometimes people just skip this step. Um, so what this means is that, especially in a situation like this, where we've got multiple uh, things going on, We've got the dog um, with kind of his own set of grain. And then we've got our real footage, our live action plate here with its grain. And then we've got our CG element, which doesn't have any grain at all. So we need to degrain and then regrain our elements here. So in this lesson, we'll just be doing the degrain and then we'll regrain in the next clip. So you need to come up here and start with your main source of footage, which this is another really good reason why I don't like using the background pipe on these scanline renders because it can introduce this footage in other places. If you just have it flowing all in one consistent downpipe like this with just things kind of coming in from the sides, I just think such better results come out of that. So just way less confusing. Um, let's go ahead and type in D and you can see that that's going to give us the D grain simple and the D noise. So I'm going to add the D grain simple, but I'm also going to add the D noise and we're going to talk about both of these things. So let's see what happens when I add the D grain simple. I'm just going to drop it in here and we can open that up. And just by default, if we zoom in on our footage, and I'm just going to hit the D key to disable and toggle between that, you can see that it is degraining, but we're losing a lot of detail in our footage. So this really isn't, you know, obviously the best way to go about degraining your footage because you just are losing so much of the detail in your uh, footage here. So. I prefer denoise, and you can use denoise to degrain. It's it's going to work the same way. So let's delete that denoise simple and drop on the um, or the degrain simple and add the denoise. Now this noise pipe here is if you've got some footage that's really complex that doesn't have any good area to analyze, then you would add a second clip of the noise from the camera that you shot your footage with. So if we had a separate clip. Usually it's really good to just shoot that on black. Then you can analyze the noise really well. So just shooting a noise plate. But in our case, our footage uh, has some good areas to be able to analyze. So we're not too worried about that. So let's go ahead and open up the denoise uh, node in our properties bin. And you can see right away we get this move the analysis region to analyze noise or press lock noise analysis to disable the message. Now, if we just press the lock noise analysis, which is located here under the noise analysis tab, there it is, then we wouldn't get any noise analysis at all. Nothing would change. So we don't want to do that because that basically says, well, now this node is not working at all. The analysis region by default is just going to go down here in the corner. So we can move this up and start to increase and change the size. So I kind of like to, you know, go over here where, you know, we don't really have a lot going on over there on the side. And then we can use this as our analysis region. Then you can start to go in and play around with the settings here. So the main ones to focus on are going to be your denoise amount and then your smoothness. So let's just see what this is doing by default. If I'm zooming in on this area over here again, and I'm disabling and re-enabling the node, you can see we're getting way better results. We're still getting some smoothing, which if you want, you can decrease that smoothing and you can see uh, there is a little more noise that comes back then, uh, but it isn't so smoothed out that you're losing a tremendous amount of detail. So keeping that there right around one is seeming to keep a good amount of detail right there. And then whenever we come up to the denoise amount, 
if I increase that, you can see how those changes happen. It really just feels like it's moving the denoiser around and that it's not really making a major change. Now, if I look at that, you can see a pretty significant difference. But again, you can start to kind of lose some detail in some of those darker areas. So just kind of split the difference and find out where you feel the most comfortable with um, the amount of detail that you're losing or, or gaining based on the settings. Um, now also keep in mind that I was zoomed in really closely. This is at 100% and um, if I disable and re-enable here, it doesn't feel like I'm losing so much detail that this is just, you know, useless. It feels, feels pretty good. Um, now this wasn't super grainy footage to begin with. Um, so that, that's definitely helpful. Now, once I have that looking the way I want, I'm just going to copy and paste that. And then let's go over to our dog footage. And I'm just going to come in and place this after my key light. So right there. And this is going to take a second because there's a lot of things at play here with the roto and kind of how that has been keyed. So it just takes a second to kind of recalculate that. And let's see what this looks like enabled and disabled. Not a tremendous amount of difference because our dog really wasn't that grainy of footage to begin with. But another issue is that if we actually view this, this is in an area where there's not a lot going on. So let's actually move it for this one over the top of our dog. Now, if we come back here and view, so we've moved that analysis region. Let's see if we see much of a difference this time. I actually am seeing a little bit of a change, but I have to get pretty close to see that. Um, so not a ton, but it's still good to kind of smooth that out and just make sure that you're not getting, um, you know, any grain in there so that when we go back to regrain, everything matches. So when we regrain, we'll also be adding grain to our CG element, which really helps to start unifying this and making all of these pieces feel like they belong in the shot at the same time. So join me in the next clip where we'll add grain.